Honorable okay. Esther Pasaris has just arrived from a Women Deliver Conference mm -hmm. in Canada. Remember this week, quite some strong allegations made towards her uh, by the governor of Nairobi County, Mike Sonko. So we will be waiting to hear her responding to that, those. Actually, that is in fact there we go. Right Let's now. listen in. Kushukuru? Yes. Kitu ya kwanza nataka kushukuru Mungu. Yes. Kwa sababu wajua ukiingia kwa ndege, lazima ujue maisha yako iko kwa Mungu. Yes. So nimeshukuru Mungu kwa hiyo journey mercy. Yes. Hiyo safari ilianza Vancouver jana. Yes. Au juzi. Ai ni juzi. Ilianza juzi. 10 hours kutoka Vancouver kufika Amsterdam. Alafu 6 hours leo hapo kwa airport kidogo na gojea Kenya Airways. Nimerudi nyumbani na Kenya Airways. Na ninataka kuambia habari ya Girl Power. Thank you. Hiyo flight ya Kenya Airways. Mm. Sasa ile nilikaa. Nikaona hakuna wanaume stewardesses. Ni wanawake peke yake. Nikawauliza. Nikawauliza, "Kweli hii ndege haina hii ndege haina wanaume steward? Eh hostesses, stewardess, wakanyambia hapana. All of them were women. The entire flight. Everybody on that aeroplane was in the hands of women and they said there are times that even the cockpit, the pilots, are all women. Yeah. So the entire flight, yeah. the entire Kenya, the entire Kenya Airways flight, yes. is sometimes brought from one country, one continent, to Kenya, to another continent by women and women alone. Women power. So what I want to tell the women of Kenya. Is that when God created men and women, yes. He gave us a neck. Yes. yes. And the neck is for us to hold our heads up. Yes. True. Yes. True. And I'm holding my head up today as yes. a leader, yes. as a woman, yes. as a mother, yes. and as a child. Yes. And as a wife. Yes. It is so important to respect women. Yes. True. Yes. And that is why our president. Our president Uhuru Kenyatta left his country to come to Vancouver, Canada to sit with other fellow presidents on a podium to discuss the issues of women. women. Yes. Yes. And it is such a shame that while the president was discussing issues yeah. of women yeah. in, a, in a country where we are looking at how women can deliver, the conference was dubbed Women Deliver. The president was there. The CS of gender, Kobia, was there. The CS of foreign affairs, another woman, Monica Juman, was there. Monica Juma was there. We were there discussing things from female genital mutilation, girl child education, sanitary towels, empowerment and space for women. All right? And while we're discussing all those issues there, I, as an elected leader, and I want to say something. I was elected by 860,000 people. Yes. And none of my votes were stolen. Yes. My votes were people that actually queued and voted for me. Yes. All right? And I got 860,000 votes. As a woman Women leader. Power. Power. Those votes. Nishuja. Okay, what I want to say, the liberation and the struggle for women did not start today and will not end today. The liberation and the struggle for women started during the Mau Mau time. Yes. If it was not for the women, this country will never have been liberated. True. True. And while we've been liberated as women and citizens of this country, we must recognize that we need each other. And we are here to serve the wider public. I am there and my job and my mandate is to look after marginalized Kenyans. And nobody should stand in the way of that, no especially way. when you know your constitution. Yes. Mm, are, <laughs> in fact, in fact, I'm so proud of
of you for carrying the constitution because this is our Bible. Yes. This is how we are guided. Yes. Yes. This is what guides how we should behave as leaders. Yes. This is what guides what is our rights. Yes. And women's rights are human rights. Yes. yes. Now, I know a lot of you are expecting me to address all the issues that were laid out in the press. But I will not, no. or in the social media, yes. I will not go down that route. Yeah. And the reason I will not go down that route yes. is because I choose to act with integrity. Yes. I choose to respect my constitution. Thank you. I shall be visiting the office of the DCI. I shall be visiting the office of the EACC. I shall be visiting the office of national cohesion and integration. I shall be visiting the National uh, Commission on uh, Women, okay? Yeah. Why? Because the Gender Commission. Because if I don't stand to defend my rights as a woman, yes. then how That's am I supposed to defend the rights of other women in this country? Yes. Yes. It would be impossible. Yes. So for me, all I want everyone to know yes. is that the first time I was offended, or the second time I was offended, in public, Everybody said, no, just leave it, don't bother, don't argue with the fool, Shame just continue. On them. And I'll tell you one thing, there is evidence always, there is always evidence. And I want to take you to the first show where I was, where I was uh, insulted, okay? And it was live, and it keeps coming back. And I was advised, just leave it, don't let it go. I mean, don't even bother. I want to tell you something. My passport, my passport is available to anybody. I have had two passports, okay, two passports over the last 10, 15 years. And it's available right there for any persons of media, any persons of law to look into my passport. Have I ever been to the Seychelles for a sex holiday? Never. All right? So when a woman is accused in public and she chooses not to respond, right? There is always this perception that a woman might be guilty. I never chose to respond because at that time I had an election to win. I was running for a woman rep position after I left the governor's position. And I decided to focus on the election. And then later on to focus on picking up the pieces of the people in my party that were aggrieved by the post-election violence. Then I was focused on learning how to be a good parliamentarian. And I'm still on that path to be a good leader because learning is a daily occurrence. So for me, just because I never stood up and said no, 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 doesn't mean that everything that was said happened. And I want to tell my young children, the young boys, all right? Many of you, when you get to social media, you think it's okay and it's all right to ride the bandwagon of insults and abuse and troll people. I want to tell the young people, at the end of the day, we are not a country of mob justice. Yes. And we should not engage in mob justice even on social media. I think it is important that we be objective and we understand what is the truth behind everything. We have laws and rules in this country and I will use every single law and rule and be guided by this constitution to ensure that this time will be the last time that somebody uses falsehood to bring down a woman or to bring down a woman leader. That's I cool. want down, down with intimidation down. I want down, down with intimidation down. I want to see good leaders in parliament. I want to see good leaders at the county level. And I'll tell you one thing, we've got a lot of women out there who have, can be good leaders. And the one thing I want to leave you with is that when God put you a neck on your shoulder as women, he meant for you to hold your head up high. Yes. I am holding my head up high because that is my right from the maker, my creator, God. Yes. And I have nothing to be ashamed of. Yes. The only thing I'm ashamed of is some of the people that can say, horrific lies without thinking first of all they have a mother they have a wife they have a daughter they have a sister all right when you go out and insult another woman you are insulting also the ones that are in your house especially when you're insulting them with falsehood especially when you're lying when you take public office, 
you have to be guided by the constitution. Yeah. You have to be guided by what is right. Yes. You cannot use lies. And I'll tell you what, it is very simple for the DCI, the ESCC, to actually investigate every one of those alleg allegations against me mm. and be able to deal with them one by one. Peddling papers on the television like this, like that, saying, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Excuse me, Kenyans, you've got to be a bit more clever than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? Yes. So all I'm telling you right now is none of the accusations that have been levied against me or the insinuations are true. Yes. And as we move along, after I've consulted with my lawyers, after I've consulted with the various government officers, because I will follow due process, this time I'm not letting it go. That's yes. true. Thank you. I'm not That's letting it go. Is power, power. We will not let it go. Yes. <laughs> what we're going to, what we're going to do, what we're going to do, is follow due process, and we've got work to do. Do you know? Um, uh, we have so much work to do as a country to address poverty, to address economic and social emp empowerment of our people, to address the the grassroots needs of our citizens, the yes. ones who put us in office. I think it's important. Excuse me. It's important that we start focusing on developmental issues. Yes. We have a lot to do. It's already two years into my term. Mm. The next three years, no one is going to deter me from doing what I need to do yes. to serve the people that put me in office to serve them with the money that government has provided me to serve them. Yes. Yes. Yes, you may. It doesn't mean you'll get an answer, but you may. <laughs> All right, so first of all, what I'd like you to do, and I'll answer that question because it's important. I've just come from a trip right now, um, Vancouver. Some trips are for, paid by donors, some trips are paid by government, some trips are paid by the county. All right? Now, um, CSW 2018, I was not part of the government delegation from Parliament. Kewapa had already chosen a few women to attend. So later on, I, after week one had already lapsed, I actually found out that the county of Kisi had sponsored Janet Ongera, Honorable Janet Ongera, and the county of Isiolo had sponsored Honorable Jaldeza Rehema. Now, I, I didn't know at that point, I'm a new parliamentarian, I didn't know that county governments can also sponsor leaders to go. So I called the governor and I said, Governor, CSW, and I think he was in New York at the time. I said, CSW, is the county sending people? He goes, yes, there's a delegation. I said, can I, can I go under the county? Because it's a women's conference. I'd love to be there. I represent Nairobi, the capital city. And he said, yes, sure. And he organized a ticket through his office. And they told me that my per diem will arrive by the time I get to New York. Now, um, even this trip that I've just gone to, I was sponsored by national government, all right? I left with the ticket. While I was there, within a week, my per, within three, four days, my per diem arrived in my account. The per diem for the county, for CSW, never arrived. And it is my right, because I went there and I spent my own personal money. Now, I kept following it up with the governor. And he kept telling me it's going to happen tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. We're processing, we're processing. One minute we don't have accountants, one minute we're under investigation. All manner of excuses. And I kept pursuing it because it's my right. And the per diem, when, you, when I go, if I go to New York with the, with the national government, my per diem is much higher than if I go with the county. With the county, I think it's about 45 or 50,000 shillings per day. And I was only there for about seven or eight days. So it was about 450,000, somewhere around that figure. To, the, to this date, I have never gotten my per diem, and that's within my right, and I should get it. Yeah. All right? Now, um, did the National Assembly give me money for CSW? No. And that can easily be proven. All right? Now, he, he can go to the National Assembly as the governor. He can write to them. I want to see the letters that he wrote to the National Assembly and the response from the National Assembly telling him that, yes, I did claim twice. All right? I'm a person of integrity. I will not claim twice. Sure. All right. So, so for me, why didn't he go to EACC? Even as as as, as, as two weeks ago, he's telling me go and see Kerich about your per diem. When I was in his office to discuss projects of Nairobi, he actually said, "Can you please pay her per diem, uh, her per diem?" And he actually said that the reason why they haven't paid it is because all the accountants were arrested 
uh, or removed from office with the Kidero investigations. So for me, I think it's important that the governor speaks with truthhood, mm-hmm. all right, and not to lie, not to dra- dramatize things. So it's very, I'm, I'm actually asking EACC. You know, sometimes complaints can reach the, the government arms through, through the public. This is a complaint by a senior state <coughs> official, a governor, a sitting elected governor, that I have claimed per DM twice. That is an offense if one has done it that way. So what I would like is the governor to go and present the evidence that I have pre- 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 uh, uh, claimed it twice. All right. In the meantime, I shall also go and see my clerk and my speaker at the National Assembly to confirm that I have never claimed per diem for CSW from the parliament or from the PSC, all right, as he was claiming on his, on his releases. Now, just giving you just that one example, right, that will show you in itself that the governor does not speak the truth. In fact, it pains me to call him governor, all right, but I give the respect of the office, not of the person. Okay. Uh, all right. That's a look. Let me tell you what. Everybody, everybody has YouTube, right? Okay. So what I would like you to do is go to YouTube and look at the Madar. And you're all from media. Look at the Madaraka Day event. All right. First of all, on that particular day, I wasn't feeling very well. But I decided since the county commissioner is a woman, and I got wind of the fact that she was there, and there was no elected leader. All right. I quickly dressed up and rushed there. All right. So I decided to go and support the county commissioner, who is a woman for Nairobi, in her first public event. All right. So I rushed there and I sat there with her. Now, if you look at the conversations that I had or what I spoke, there is no way in my speech where I said to the governor that you're not picking my calls. Have a look at that. So I don't understand what he was addressing when he stood up and said, you're complaining about me not picking your calls. I never said it. So have a look at my speech. Find the clip that says, Governor, you're not picking my calls. That is not something I'm going to address. The governor, yes. the governor is communication skills obviously require a lot of work. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, all right, on that particular day, I addressed the issues pertaining to, pertaining to my functioning as a woman representative with the county. Because it's from the 2nd of May. All right. I've been trying to get permission to do work for the marginalized uh, citizens of this county. And that should be in his interest. All right. But he's been taking me around in circles. All right. Telling me, come tomorrow, come tomorrow. And I'm tired. OK. Now, he, he admitted that there are no toilets in this city and we need toilets. Surely, if the governor wants to serve his people and he recognizes that he needs toilets. Right. Why can't he ensure that it's done and facilitated? All right. So I want you to understand something that no way in my speech had I mentioned that governor, you're not picking my calls. No way. So I don't know where he came out with that. All right. So I will leave it. I will stop it. Wait. I'm a chalk. No, listen. Hey, respect woman. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. Hey, I'm a chalk. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yes, I need to. Okay, look, I'll tell you what. I have told you very clearly. First of all, I want to thank you, the media, for being here. All right. Um, I think uh, a lot of people are under attack at this point in time from the office of the governor, all right? And I, I would suggest for the purposes of us being able to serve the country and to serve the citizens and to avoid confusion as leaders, because we're supposed to conduct ourselves in a manner that shows we have integrity. We, how can we lead others when there's confusion on the leadership? All right, so this is what I would like to say is let us wait for the various arms of government to do their investigation. And I am asking the DCI, the EACC to please don't sit there enjoying taxpayers' money and not investigating allegations to do with public servants, yes. allegations to do with leaders. Yes. All right, for me, I welcome them, mm. including, by the way, I also waive all, all rights to privacy when it comes to the Hotel Intercontinental. I would love the Hotel Intercontinental to access all my private data as to when I ever stayed in that hotel, All right, because I only remember staying in that hotel for two nights, two nights, all right, when we had the induction for parliament, we all stayed at the Intercontinental. And when the governor called me, 
when the governor called me to ask me whether I was going for the induction, because there was a lot of tension at that time whether NASA members of parliament would go for the induction, I actually said, Governor, I've already checked in. I am here. All right. So when you take things out of context and try to create a story that is false, forgetting that I'm a mother of young adults, forgetting that I'm a mother of an entire county, forgetting that I'm a child of someone and I'm a wife of someone, I think it is disgraceful and degrading. So for me, I am not letting this go. This is the last time that somebody questions my integrity yeah. with falsehood. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Let's go through. Uh, yes. 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 Yes.